We now are authorizing to the app itself with the one tap sign in. We are authorizing uh, to generate a refresh token and grant access to the Google Ads API. So the next step that we're going to take is pulling these two things together and saving the refresh token in a secret manager. We're gonna use the Google Cloud Secret Manager API to do that. What's nice about this, all this is we're using all these APIs. Uh, I've signed the user in, I'm gonna store the refresh token. Uh, I haven't even uh, used the word database yet. Uh, that's because this is all handled uh, via cloud, which is super awesome how we can kind of piece these different APIs together and accomplish this goal. So if we go back to our app.js file, we saved our token as response.credentials. So what we're gonna do is also pass this in as a parameter. Token equals local storage get item token. Add a query param, token equals token. Let's go back into our server. Let's grab a token, quest.args.get token create a session variable called token and set that equal to token. Come in here, it's equal to session token. Now in our OAuth2 callback, we'll pass through an additional parameter called token, which we need here. As you can see here, we have a refresh token variable, we're not doing anything with it. So what we're going to do is save it to a secret. We're gonna need that token because what we're going to end up doing is passing in the token value as well as the refresh token in order to save this secret. So we haven't talked about the Google Cloud Secret Manager yet, but I have some documentation open. So in order to use this, we'll just Hip install it. Now while that's installing, one thing I do want to point out, so if you do use this, uh, this took me a while to figure out. It's actually very uh, clearly documented, but follow these instructions here in order to authenticate. Basically it involves using the Google Cloud console to log in and it just automatically authenticates you, which is a lot easier than whatever I was trying to do. So there's a few things we need to do. We will need to create a secret, add a secret version, access secrets, and we will need to list secrets. There's a reason there's a difference between creating a secret and creating a secret version. Secret is almost like a container for different versions of secrets. Say you have a, a secret, it's almost like an identifier to a given secret and then you can have different versions of it as they update and change. What we're going to do is just work with the latest version. So first we'll create the secret and then we'll add a version to that secret that actually references the refresh token that we want. In order to do all this, I'm basically just gonna copy and paste most of this code. So what we'll do is create in our auth directory a new file called secret.py and in here we'll create a class called secret init method self. And the other thing we're gonna pass into this init method is the token itself, which we're going to use to generate an ID. And I probably need the def keyword. Self.id equals something. Get ID from token. Let's actually do that first. If we head back over to the identity API, there is a section here where we can say, verify the Google ID token server side. This is exactly what we need. What we eventually want is this user ID. We'll make a new method, validate token get ID, say UID, no, it's called ID. That's going to be the token. We need self. In order to do this, we will need these two libraries here. Looks like we have access to those from the Google uh, Ads API. Basically, copy and paste all of this. For the sake of making this a little more readable, I'm just going to drop out the comments.
So this is just verifying the token and then getting the ID, which is ID called ID info.sub. That means self dot all the token get ID with the token. So now this is going to be the key for our cloud secret manager. We also need a client ID here. So this will be the same client ID that we had in our console. So I could just say, go back here, client ID equals port OS. We'll just say client ID equals OS dot Chiron client ID. Easy enough. Now we replace this. Excellent. So now every time we instantiate this class, we will have a reference to the ID of the user, which will serve as the key, and will also help us construct paths to reference that given secret. All right, so the next method that I will write here is to create a secret version. Check if secret exists. If not, create a secret and then create secret version under secret. If self dot does secret exist, then will create the secret. Does secret exist? Self. For now, we'll just return false, but we'll come back to this shortly. So let's head on back to the secrets documentation, create a secret. Rather than just creating a new client every time, we could just variable here. parent, which refers to the project parent, which will be the project ID. Um, and then we say self.client, secret ID is self.id. And now all we need to do is fill in this project ID. So I've actually already saved this, but this is just from your cloud project. If you go to your cloud project, you can uh, find the actual just ID and name of your project. So with that, we can now create a secret version. And this is pretty self-explanatory. So create the secret. I guess it's already written. All right, so we have our parent create secret. We don't actually need to do anything with this response. If the secret already exists, we don't need to create it. But in any case, we'll create the secret version under the secret, which we can do by add secret version. I'm basically just going to grab all of this. They have a little helper method to create a path. This is our project ID. This is our ID. This is an optional step for security and check some. We'll, uh, terrific. We don't actually need that. So this payload here isn't actually the payload. We need to have a, when we create the secret version, we're actually saving our refresh token. So we'll go on in here and we will change that to refresh token. Great, so now we can validate to get the ID, we can create the secret version. Uh, let's implement this does secret exist method uh, here. And in order to do that, we will use the ability to list secrets and basically we'll say, This is our project ID. Okay. 
Okay. So if secret.name equals, let's just say, so I know our secret name is going to be equal to oh, project number. This is your Google Cloud project number. Uh, another, we'll just copy paste this. I have these already saved as environment variables. Okay, so now we have, so if our secret.name equals secret name, we can return true or true. And if we get through this whole list and we don't have any matches, we know it doesn't exist, so we'll return false. And that's how we know we need to actually create the secret. All right, and then finally, the last method that we need is the ability to retrieve a secret because when we want to make API calls, we need to be able to use the ID that we've gotten from this token and this method and then fetch the secret. So in order to do that, access secret version. Again, I'm just copying and pasting these code examples. And what we will do is copy everything. And I could probably refactor this code a little bit, but I'm not going to, for the sake of time, get secret version. Self, yeah, that should do it. Okay, so this would be self.id. And instead of looking for a specific version, we're always just going to get the latest version here. So our response will be self.client, do a little checksum, uh, make sure the, the data isn't corrupted, do not print the secret to production. Thank you, that's good advice. Return response to that payload and that will be our secret. And finally, we'll just save our refresh token to a secret. So we'll create a new secret with our token. That way we can create the idea of the secret based on that token, and then we'll save our refresh token to the secret manager. All right, so let's give this a try. And what we'll do first, we'll just authenticate. And generally speaking, you're going to want to wait until that's done to display this button because we need the token from that step in order to save our refresh token. So we'll link our Google Ads account, go through, advanced, go to Google Ads, save, continue, and hopefully it just redirects us back to our app. Fantastic, but what has that actually done? Well, one, we were already doing this, uh, but what it has also done is it has saved the secret to a secret manager. And here I have a plugin installed for the Google Cloud APIs and specifically the secret manager. And I can see the secrets that I have listed here. And if I refresh, I can see this secret. I've already done this uh, a couple times. So let's try this. Versions, aha, 1206. So this is the one I just created, perfect. Um, and these others were just some tests from earlier. So now, if I click into here, you can see the secret identifier. You can't actually see the secret, and I'm not gonna show you. If, you. if you go into the secret manager in the console, you would actually be able to display that value. Perfect, so now we have a, a way to log a user into our front-end application with one tap. We can now go through the auth process to generate a refresh token. And now we're saving that refresh token securely to the Google Cloud Secret Manager using their API.